In this video, we're going to talk about queues. So queues are different from uh, stacks, and they're kind of the opposite. Okay, so a queue, and, and we don't use this word much in America, but in England, they refer to a queue as just a, li a line, like a line in the movies. Okay, so they'll use the term queue up, which means to line up. Okay, so in a queue, unlike in a stack, um, the first person in line is the first person out of the line, right? If you're the first person in line up to go into the movie, you should be the first person to go into the movie. Okay, so it's a first in, first out, which is different from what we saw with stacks. In fact, the exact opposite. Okay, so as before, we're going to create a um, abstract data type for queues. We're then going to model them with both arrays and linked lists, just like we did before. Okay, so today we're talking about arrays. So the picture for arrays is not quite as clear cut as it was for um, stacks, okay, using arrays for queues. The reason being, since we're going to be deleting, okay, we're adding to the rear, but we're deleting from the front, okay? It's the deleting from the front that's going to cause us some trouble, okay? It means that we can't, we can't continue to utilize the entire um, max queue size that we've allocated, okay? So I've got a, a little picture here. I'm just using Excel uh, for, for the way it works. So this what is what would happen if you would, um, again, we pull from the front. So we would add or do a add Q1, then add Q4, then add Q6, uh, and then add Q3, and then add Q2. So these are the addresses, the index addresses of those. Okay, so in this case, our max Q size would be 12. Okay, so we have this, and I'm showing in color here what has been allocated and what is not. We don't know, we don't care what's in, in there. Okay, so if we have some, um, this configuration, our Q front then, which is one of the, the, the member data of the Q ADT will be equal to zero. That's the index of the first one. The Q rear is equal to four. Okay, that's the position of the last one. And then we're also going to keep a count. So the count's going to be five. Okay. If I would do the following operations on the Q, I start by doing an add Q8. So eight goes into this position here. Okay. Delete Q. You see now I've got kind of a hole in, in my array, okay, which is okay. Um, and then I'm going to add seven as well. Okay, so delete Q always pulls from this, the top. So the one was pulled out first, okay? So um, this is all okay. Now the Q front's equal to one, the Q rear is equal to six, and the count's equal to six, okay? The problem we're going to have is, if you can imagine, if you've pushed yourself, let's see if I can do this gracefully, uh, two, one, two, three, four, five, six to right there. Nope, one more. Let's go to right there. Okay, now, now I'm in this position. Okay, so I've deleted um, some stuff and it would be hard to get from where I'm at to where I'm going, but just, just work with me here. Okay, so in this case, um, in this position, if I go to add a new element, okay, so here, our Q front would be equal to six. Our Q rear is equal to 11. And our count is still six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're still there. Okay. Our max Q size. Is equal to 12. Okay, so we should be able to have 12 elements in our, our array or in, in our queue. Okay. But the problem, if I now go to add Q5, okay, I can't go here. It's out of bounds. Okay. So what we'd like to be able to do to be able to deal with this and, and utilize our array more is to be able to wrap back around to here. Okay. And then add our five over here. Okay. So in that case, the Q rear would then point to zero. Okay. Our Q front's the same and our count would go up to seven. And of course the shading would, would change as well. Okay, so we'd have that. Let me see if I can do this quickly without taking too much time. Yeah. So we, we now have basically this picture, okay, where it goes off on one end and comes back on the other. Okay. So it's a little more complexity, but it's not the end of the world. We can just use the modulo operator on the max Q size to check our numbers. And if they go off the end, they just wrap back around, okay? 
but we do have to know when we're really done and we use the count variable to help us with that. Okay, so now let's take a look at the code. It's always good to go to the code. Okay, so in the code here, let's take a look. We first have our uh, Q ADT, okay, our abstract data type. Okay, so it's this abstract data type that is going to um, be used not only when we create a queue with um, the um, arrays, but also when we create a queue with a linked list, okay, just like it did with stacks, the functionality is going to remain the same. Okay, so here are the operations. We have you know, this empty queue is a Boolean function. This lets you know if the function or if the queue is empty or not is full queue, which again won't make any sense for the linked list version, but we'll need it for the array based version. Okay. We have the initialized queue, which puts it to an empty state. We have the front, which returns the first element of the queue. Okay. Note here we have the precondition that the queue exists and is not empty. Okay. Note this is not, this doesn't change the queue. So this is kind of like the top function on, on a queue, on a stack. Okay. We're adding a back function here, which will return what's at the last element of the queue. Okay. Um, which we, we, we're not going to access it in that way, but we're still going to have that ability. We have the add queue, which allows us to add a new element of type type. This is a templated function as well to our queue. Okay. And then we have the delete queue, which is going to allow us to remove the first element of the queue. Okay. It's kind of how that works. So taking what we had just talked about, okay, we're going to create the queue type to implement the queue using arrays. Okay. So we're starting here. I'm including the qadt.h file. Okay. I've also got the IO stream and using namespace standard. I've got my template state here, template statement here as always. And then I'm creating this class Q type, which is going to publicly inherit from the qadt type. Okay. Notice all those functions that we had in the qadt.h were pure virtual functions. So they have to be implemented here. Okay. So those will be here. We start here with the is empty queue, the is full queue, and the initialized queue, and, and so forth. Okay. But um, we're also going to add some other things to make this work. Okay. And it starts with, again, because we have memory data that we're holding. Okay. We're going to have an array. Okay. If we had a linked list, same thing. We're going to have to override the, the assignment operator, the equal sign, to make sure that we don't get shallow copies. Okay. We're then going to have our Boolean functions for is empty queue, is full queue, initialized queue, and so forth. We'll just we'll go through these as we create them. Okay, so we're going to start like we did with the um, arrays with the the is empty queue. Okay, pretty straightforward. We're just going to return, okay, the Boolean expression if count is equal to zero, then the queue is empty. We just return that. We're done. Quick and easy. Okay, and in the same way. For the is full queue, we can return the Boolean expression count is equal to max Q size. Okay, so if the count is already at the max Q size, we can't add any more. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Moving on to the initialize queue, here we can. Um, set up what a, a, a brand new queue looks like. So if there's existing material, this will wipe it out, okay? So with this, we have to set the queue front equal to zero, okay? We're gonna set our queue rear be equal to the max queue size minus one, okay? So max queue size doesn't include zero, so we have minus one there. And we're gonna let the count be equal to zero, okay? So let's now look at the front operation. It's going to return the first element of the queue, okay? Which is straightforward enough, okay? So for this, um, we're starting here on the front. We're gonna do an assert. Remember the preconditions were that it's not an empty queue. So not is empty queue. Okay, so as long as that is the case, we can return 
our list at the position of Q front. Okay. Okay. And since I've added the assert here, I want to go back to the top and before I forget it, include the C assert library. Okay. Again, the assert says if this Boolean uh, expression evaluates to true, you ignore it. If not, you shut the whole thing down. Okay. So the back is going to look very similar. The back is also going to assert that we're not is empty Q. Okay. Semicolon. Okay. In this case, we're going to return the list at Q rear. Okay. That's all that's going to do. So again, those are all pretty straightforward. Now the add Q gets a little more complicated, okay? So again, with the add queue, we have to be concerned, what if we have to go beyond the end of the array and back around to the other side with a modulo operator, okay? So we're gonna start this with checking to see first off, if not is full queue, okay? If the queue is full, can't do anything, so we can't go on, okay? So I'm gonna let my queue rear, be equal to the Q rear plus one, which we would normally do, but I'm going to take that mod max Q size, which is going to allow us to wrap around um, the end of the array if there's room available on the top. Okay. We're then going to say count plus plus. And we're going to let the list of Q rear. Now we know where where Q is a weird word. Lots of uh, letters we don't need. So list the of Q rear then is going to be equal to the Q item we're passing in. Okay. So that's that's all we're doing there. Okay, that's for the if, okay. And then we're gonna have our else here. If we get to this point, it means we're going to see out that we cannot add to a full queue. Okay, so we've got there going to end the else and end the function, okay? So in this case, again, we're setting the queue rear. If if we're not to the end yet, we're just putting it at the first position going from there, okay? And um, then we're going to go around with the mod if we have to, okay? So the delete queue is going to have a similar issue. Okay, so we're going to say here if not is empty Q. Okay, so if you're if it's empty, you can't delete anything from it. Okay, we're going to say count minus minus to decrement the counter. Okay, and we're going to set the Q front since we delete from the front. Okay. Note that we're not getting the value. It's not returning a value. It's just deleting. It's doing exactly what a pop did for a stack. Okay. It's going to be equal to, in a similar way, the Q front plus one mod max Q size. Okay. And again, the mod, if you're uh, unfamiliar, it's a modulus operator. It returns the remainder when you divide one thing by the other. Okay, that's going to take care of the if, if, and we've got an else as well. I'm going to be seeing out that we cannot remove from an empty queue. Okay, similar issues. 
Okay. Yeah. Got rid of that. Takes care of that. Okay. So this is going to allow us to add things to the queue, get things back from the queue. Okay. We have the ability to return the front and the back elements. Okay. And we also have the Booleans for is full and is empty. Okay. So the next thing we're going to worry about here is our constructors and destructors. Okay. So uh, with the constructor here, okay, so we've got it right here. We've got our Q type, which is going to take an int um, Q size. We're going ahead and, and putting in a default value. Okay, so if if nothing is said, um, then that's going to to be the the value we're going to use. Okay, this is our constructor here. Okay, we'll start off if. Q size, which we're passing in, is less than or equal to zero. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and give them an error message if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase here. I'm going to set max Q size equal to 100. You probably should warn them about that. The book does, but I'm not going to do that. I understand you. Or I assume you know how C out statements work. Okay. Else, we're going to let the max Q size be equal to the Q size that they passed in. Again, there's a default of 100. Okay. And then here on the constructor, we're going to set the Q front equal to zero. We're going to set the Q rear equal to the max Q. That's a fun word to type. Size minus one, the reasons we did before. Okay. And we're going to set the count equal to zero. And we're going to say the list is equal to new types. So here's where we're actually allocating the memory. for the array, the whole things, OK? That's it. That's all a constructor needs to do. Again, we're setting the max Q size as a variable they pass in. They don't pass in anything. Or if it's less than or equal to 0, then we're going to default it to be 100, OK? Uh, if there's nothing there, it goes to 100. And then um, if not, we're going to set it to the size they say. Set the Q front to 0. We're going to set the Q rear. It's going to cause me trouble if I didn't catch it. Equals the max Q size minus one. The count setting to zero, and we're allocating memory for the list array right here. Okay. The destructor, all we have to worry about there, the only memory uh, address or the only memory um, asset that we're holding is the array. So we can do a delete bracket bracket list that will do the destructor. Okay, that gives us our constructor and our destructor. Okay, so um, that should be what we need. Okay, so what is missing from that, interestingly enough, so I'm guessing they did this on purpose. So it must be an exercise for the user, which is where, where we will start in class. Okay, we still don't have the copy constructor. And we don't have the overloading of the assignment operator. Okay. So both of those can be accomplished. So that, that will be what we work on in class, uh, at least in part, is that you want to create a copy queue function. Okay. So this should look similar. And, and you can look back to your array based stack, copy stack function, should be the same basic idea. Okay. And then you can put that in both the copy constructor and in. Uh, to the overriding of the equal sign, okay? Um, and that should do it. I will go ahead and put this in the um, slash GMP directory as before. So you can start with the, the Q ADT and the Q type. And then again, the first task, um, which once we get into class, or you can do it in advance if you want, if you want to be quick. Um, you can go ahead and create 
that private function copy Q and then use that private function copy Q in both the copy constructor and the, um, the overriding of the assignment operator. Okay, so that should should be relatively straightforward. Again, look at the stack um, type dot cpp file for examples. Okay, so hopefully we have a good idea of, of how queues work. They're very similar to stacks, except instead of being first in last out, they're first in first out. Okay, so that's kind of kind of where we're at. Okay, so if you have questions, uh, let me know. If not, we'll talk about things in class tomorrow.